Hello, everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the governing equation for the incompressible free flow. The first equation is the conservation of mass. For the incompressible free flow, we assume that the divergence of the mass flux across the boundary of a control volume is zero. Since the density is assumed to be a constant, we have the divergence of the free velocity vector equals to zero. The second equation is the conservation of momentum, or we call it the momentum transportation equation, or the unsteady incompressible Navier Stoke equation. Based on the Newton's second law, we have that the fluid density rho times the acceleration of a fluid element, which is a material derivative of the fluid velocity vector, equals to the external terms exerted on the fluid element. It should be noted that the material derivative is actually in Lagrangian description. It describes the acceleration of a particular fluid element moving in the space. However, the ordinary description on the other side is more popular in the mesh-based numerical methods for computational fluid dynamics. In the mesh-based numerical methods, we discretize the computational domain in the space with points and seek the numerical solutions on these points using different numerical formulations. Most of the time, these points are stationary in the space, which is a perfect representation of the Eulerian description. However, there are exceptions where we approximate the numerical solution in Lagrangian description in particular regions of the computational domain, where the mesh grids change their locations precisely with the motion of the submerged body in the fluid. On the other side, for the far field, we approximate the governing equation at fixed points, which is in Eulerian description. The mesh grids elsewhere move arbitrarily in a mixed Lagrangian and Eulerian type of description to guarantee the quality of the dynamic mesh. Hence, this technique is called arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian description. I'm going to talk about this method in another series of video. Hence, based on these reasons, we conveniently convert the fluid acceleration in Lagrangian description into the Eulerian description, as shown in the middle of the equal signs. The first term in the Eulerian description is a partial derivative of the fluid velocity vector with respect to time in the Eulerian description. The second term is an advection term. It should be noted that this term is nonlinear because we have the velocity vector times the velocity vector, and it is closely related to the hydrodynamic instability developed in the fluid flow. In fact, without this term, the fluid momentum transportation will be totally linear, and the fluid dynamic will now be as chaotic as it should be in the reality. On the right-hand side of the equation are the external force terms. The first term is the pressure force term, which is a negative gradient of fluid pressure. The second term is a viscous force action. Mu is a dynamic viscosity, which is a constant for incompressible Newtonian fluid flow. Here, we neglect the influence of non-conservative force field to the transportation of free momentum. On the other hand, the conservative gravitational force field 
is combined with the thermodynamic pressure here. Hence, in this video, the pressure represents the modified pressure always. As we know, the momentum transportation and energy transportation are completely decoupled for the isothermal and incompressible free flow. Hence, the conservation of energy is also neglected in the governing equations here. The fluid dynamic is subtle, chaotic in the reality. However, in the past, we have tried to understand its mechanism by making many simplifications or assumptions. There are few special cases which are commonly encountered in practice. The first is the static flow, in which the partial derivative with respect to time is assumed to be zero. Hence, the governing equation above forms a pure boundary value problem here, and we are solving for equilibrium problem. The second case is the assumption of zero vorticity, omega, means omega equals to zero in which the rotation of the fluid element with respect to its own axis is assumed to be zero. This is corresponding to the so-called e-rotational flow. We can see that the vorticity omega is defined as the twice of the angular velocity of the fluid element and the curve of the velocity vector. If we define the velocity as the gradient of a potential function, we can see that the assumption of zero vorticity is automatically satisfied, as shown above. In fact, there are some vector identities which are very helpful in the study of flame mechanics. As shown here, it is a curve of the gradient of a scalar function always equals to zero, and the divergence of the curve of a vector function always equals to zero as well. The third simplification, the incompressibility of the free flow, is a key assumption in the study of hydrodynamics which significantly reduces the dimensions of the fluid problem. As we have mentioned above, in incompressible fluid flow, the divergence of fluid velocity is zero. To find the solution to the novel stoke equation, which is basically a partial differential equation, we developed many well-established approaches in mathematics. In particular, we notice that the dynamics of the fluid particle frequently follow certain patterns in the local region, especially for the case of very low radius numbers, for example, the so-called Stokes, Stokes flow or two-dimensional laminar flow, in which the fluid flow can be well predicted with the analytical solutions to partial differential equations. However, it is not the case for three-dimensional turbulent flow, where the hydrodynamic instabilities are triggered by different mechanisms due to the existence of nonlinearity in the navier stokes equation. In this video, we only focus on the finite difference methods. The discussion of the fluid dynamics will be reserved for the other series of video. In mathematics, to qualitatively describe the dynamics of the solution to a dynamical system, we frequently plot the solution trajectory in the phase planes. Similarly, since the free flow is also governed by the dynamic system, People have established a way, a way to define the fluid velocity with respect to his trajectory, which, which is a stream function. 
However, there is a limitation. It is only limited to the cases in two-dimensional flow, since the commonly used definition of the string function is not well defined for three-dimensional flow. Due to the existence of singular, singular points on the 2D phase plane, where the string function is, is not defined, for example, the single source points at where the string functions of different values cross, this actually violates the no cross assumption of the commonly used definition of string function. Despite this limitation, the application of string function is significant to the study of fluid dynamics and make unique contributions in history. Those contents will also be reserved for the other series of video. So in the incompressible free flow, we also assume that the free flow is irrotational based on the conservation of mass and the definition of potential function. We have that the La Laplace sin of the string function equals to zero here. Hence, we have the well-known Laplacian equation for the potential flow, which is basically incompressible and irrotational flow. On the other hand, if we define the fluid velocity with respect to the string, string function, we find that the incompressibility is automatically satisfied. This is the beauty of the application of string function. It perfectly eliminates the computation of conservation of mass in the simulation. The fourth case is a simple one-dimensional unsteady incompressible and inviscid flow. The governing equation for this case is obtained by removing the viscous force term in the Navier-Stokes equation by simply manipulation and assuming the fluid flow is evaluated along a particular streamline, we arrive at the unsteady Bernoulli equation, which is the time derived derivation of velocity plus the directional derivative of pressure and one half of the square of fluid velocity. If we neglect the time derivative, we obtain the classical Bernoulli equation for incompressible and inviscid flow in the bracket. The fifth case is a common two dimensional or three dimensional unsteady incompressible and inviscid flow. Since it is assumed to be inviscid, the viscous term is supposed to approach to zero. On the other hand, the Reynolds number is assumed to approach to the infinity. The resultant governing equation is a famous incompressible Euler equation, in which the viscous term is neglected. If we combine the conservation of mass and the momentum transportation equation together, we obtained another famous equation, which is a pressure poison equation. It makes its presence in the numerous projection based numerical formulations for incompressible free flow, in which it establishes an analytical relationship between the pressure and the intermittent fluid velocity. On the contrary, in some cases, the Reynolds number is much smaller than zero, and it is much smaller and approach to zero. We call these flows as Stokes flow or creeping flow. It is also known that the Stokes flow are generally steady. Hence, we also can obtain a pressure Laplace equation if we consider the conservation of mass and the momentum together.
In Navier Stokes equation, we know that the nonlinear advection term and the viscous force term are two critical, uh, critical terms. If the advection phenomenon is dominant or the viscous effect is neglig negligible, the Navier Stokes equation behaves like a hyperbolic equation. In hyperbolic equation, the disturbance is transported at a characteristic, characteristic speed and cannot be passed upstream in the propagation direction and affect only a limited region downstream, which is called the zone of influence. Furthermore, it also allows a discontinuity in the solution. For example, the shock wave in transonic and the supersonic flow or the wave equation. On the other hand, if the viscous dissipation is dominant over the advection, the Navier Stokes equation becomes a parabolic type partial differential equation. It represents a matching problem with significant dis dissipation. In this case, the disturbance propagate upstream and downstream, but only affect the solution at the previous time step. The common example are unsteady viscous flow or heat conduction, or the steady viscous boundary layer flow. Because of the presence of the dissipation, the solution space is also smooth. The elliptical type partial differential equation is commonly used to approximate the equilibrium state in fluid dynamics. For example, the steady potential flow or Stokes flow. In the elliptical type partial differential equation, a disturbance in the interior of the solution affects the solution everywhere in all directions. Due to the presence of dissipation action, the solution space is also smooth. So generally, how do we classify a partial differential equation? We take a standard second order partial differential equation as an example. It is formed with a partial derivative of the dependent variable phi with respect to the independent variable x and y which could be the space or time. Here, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are coefficients. So, if B squared minus four times A times C larger than zero, we should have a hyperbolic type. If B squared minus four times A times C equals zero, we obtain a parabolic type partial differential equation. If B squared minus four times A times C smaller than zero, we arrive at a elliptical type PDE. However, we should know that the characterization of PDE depends on the roots of the higher order terms. In this case, they are the second order terms. Furthermore, if the coefficients are functions of independent variable, for example, the spatial coordinates x and y, the governing equation may belong to different type of partial differential equation at a different location and time. Hence, we call it a mixed type, which could be observed in a hyperbolic flow with a blunt body, block body. So this is the end of my uh, this video. Thank you very much for your watching.